Hi there everyone, I hope we're doing all right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to have a wee look through the 2019 past paper for National 5 graphic communication. So uh, we can see it's a two hour long paper and it's worth 80 marks. So uh, taking a look here at question number one, a range of marker pen packaging is shown below. You can see we've got rendered 3D CAD illustrations here. We've also got exploded pictorial views, nice view of the lid, the sleeve and the base. So question 1A, identify the correct groups of the third angle orthographic views of the lid by ticking a box below, ignore wall thickness. So taking a look at these boxes right here, we've got four different options and we want to pick the one that represents this pictorial sketch right here. So. Uh, from this pictorial sketch, uh, what I can see is this small uh, feature right here. So I'm going to use that to base off my judgment of which one's right here. So you can see this shape here, that face looks correct. So does that one. Yep. And so does that one there. Yeah. This one here, we can actually see that wee feature. So I'm going to take a look at this one. Now. Coming here, we've got this end elevation. Coming to the main elevation here, I can already notice that this corner here, representing this edge, should be visible right here. So instantly I know that that's not the right answer. This one here, you can see our corner here, representing this edge on the elevation. So that one's looking right. Uh, so we'll continue on with this one. Coming down here, that would be the correct view if we're looking in from that side. So that's elevations right, and that plan is correct as well. So without needing to check those two as well, I already know that this one here is correct. We'll go to B. Again, the exact same thing, but this is for the base this time. Looking at the elevation, we can see we've got a higher edge right here. A lower edge and two slanted edges so start off with this one we've got this surface right here coming across we can notice that this edge right here should be represented here not a hidden detail line so instantly no it's not that one this one here we've started off at the opposite side this time and if we were to look at that side of it, no, we should be looking at the back, so not that one there. Let's check this one. We've got this side again represented. <clears throat> then we would be looking at the back, so that side's correct. We've got the hidden detail line for this small edge here. And we've got the opposite side, which is this side. And then the top view is correct. So without needing to view that one, I know that that one's correct. We'll go have a wee take a look at the correct answers. So 1A is bottom right and 1B is bottom left. So, yep, bottom right for that one and bottom left for that one. Again, more surface development this time. To complete the two DCAD drawings required for the manufacturer, the CAD technician had been asked to produce the surface developments for the lid and base. Identify the correct surface developments of the lid by ticking a box below. So, again, I'm going to start off by using this small feature right here. Check and see. That one's correct. Oh, perfect. Well, they're all correct then. Now, moving across here, we should have a nice flat surface going across. So the next surface coming across from this corner would be this corner. And as we can see, it's not flat. Coming across here, that's flat. Coming up and across to that side, it's flat. Coming across and it's flat. So this one here is ruled out. From that next corner, from here, we would be coming down from the other side because it's the exact same as this side here. So. We come up, across, and then down. So that one's all right. Come up, across. We're not coming down here, so that's that one out. Come up, across, and across. So that's that one out as well. So it needs to be that one. 
think this is... Oh, we'll do the last two then. D, or we'll actually double check and see if we got that correct. So we're seeing top left. There we are. C, top left. D now. Identify the correct surface development. Here we are. We've got the base again. So angled side coming down. That's that side. It would be coming straight across the way. Not coming up the way, so it won't be this one. Coming straight down. Across the way. So it might be this one. Straight down, across the way, maybe. Straight down and across the way, so it won't be this one. Check this again. Straight down, across. So we've come straight down and across. And then we're coming straight back up. Straight down, across, straight back up. So maybe this one. Straight down, across, across. So not this one either. Straight down, across, and across. So not this one either. So this one would be top right. So we'll go and check. There we are, top right. Last one here for question one. Orthographic views of the assemble packaging are shown below. So we've got an orthographic assembled sketch here. Identify the two pictorial assembled drawings that match the arrangement shown of the orthographic assembly by ticking the box below. So now we have six options here and we're trying to find out which of these isometric sketches right here is uh, representing this orthographic sketch. So last time then, use this small feature one more time. We can see that this surface here, the feature is on the right hand side, but which should be in the left. So it won't be this one. We can't actually see it on this, so it might be this. And um, this one here. Yep, that's the correct way. So it could be this one. Nope, that's the exact same as that. So it won't be there. Same as that one. And that one's correct. So it might be this one. Might be this one. Uh, where's that last one? Might be this one. So these three are ruled out. Now looking at it, we want to come up here. And then we want to come straight across. So we're coming up and we're coming straight across here. So it might be that one. Coming up straight across here. So it might be that one as well. And we can actually see on this side. So this one still maybe and maybe for all of them. We've got this small feature here. Straight across, straight down. So maybe that one. We can't see it on this side. This one here comes straight across. Oh, not this one. And this side, we can't actually see it as well. So could be any of these three. I feel as if it might be this one right here, actually. Far left and right. Oh, that's why there's two options you can have. Keep in mind for the marks. So we want to identify the two options available to us. So on to the next question now. Question two. Graphic designer created a layout containing various infographics shown below. So we've got a nice infographic right here. We've got graph chart A, graph chart B, and we've got energy consumption at home. So that's what we're learning about and we've got some graphs. 2A, state the types of graphs shown at graph chart A and graph chart B. So we're stating what types of graphs these are. So if we go to the answers here, we can see that it's a line graph and a pie graph. So we can see nice and easy lines, it's a line graph, and we've got a small pie wedge here for different percentages. So that's why that's a pie graph. Now, Moving on to B, explain, giving reasons for your answer, why graph chart A is appropriate for communication, uh, communicating this type of information. So worth two marks here, we go up. What type of communication is it giving? It's telling us the temperature over a time of 24 hours. So explain why giving a reason for your answer. We go here, it shows a trend. 
change over a period of time compares two sets of data. So right here, we also have some additional guidance. Do not accept, clear to read, easy to understand. So these answers would not be accepted, whereas these are the answers that they're looking for right now. So as you can see, Explain giving a reason for your answer, why a graph chart A is appropriate for communication of this type of information. Obviously, the temperature changes over the course of 24 hours, so that's a good reason why it changed over a period of time. Question C. The graphic designer creates a, base, uh, a graph based on a photograph of a house to show the proportions of energy consumption in a home. Describe two ways the designer has used proportion to convey the different percentages of consumption. So look into our answers here. We've got the size of the circles, the size of the numbers, size of building, slice, perspective of the building. So we need two of these. Do not accept any responses that, re uh, uh, that refer solely to colour. So they're not wanting you to refer to the colour of it, but they're wanting you to refer to these circles here, as well as the size of the numbers, sizes of the buildings, and the perspective of the building. So we can see we've got a nice two-point perspective building as, as well here. So any two of these gets you the mark. DI here, the graphic designer used DTP software uh, to edit the image of the house by removing the background. Set the name of the DTP tool used to remove the background of the image. So nice one marker here. And all we're looking for is crop tool. And right here, you'll see that we can also accept crop or full crop. So either three of these. Explain the advantages of removing the background uh, from the image of the house. Uh, let's see, DII, improved integration of text and graphics allow images to be placed onto alternative col uh, context, can declutter the image, making it more of a focal point, and they would also accept stand out there. So we're talking about this image. To continue, details from the layout are shown below. So we've got uh, I here and we've got II. Heating and 50%. So E here. State the name of the DTP technical uh, oh, techniques shown on the layout at I and II. So I here. Now, could get this confused for text wrap, but as we can see, the text is actually curving and it's following a path. So it's text along a path. Flow text along a path is an answer, and as you can see here, they would also accept text along a path. This percent here, we've got a, a warm background and a nice bright white color. We're thinking about reverse here. So two contrasting shades to make the white stand out. Explain two ways the graphic designer can reduce the impact of the environment when printing the layout. So we've got plenty of answers here and we want two of them. Reduce in a uh, reduction in ink, reduce gauge of paper, reduction in pollution, environmentally friendly inks. And as you can see, the list goes on. Things that we wouldn't be able to accept are responses that relate to production in digital format print in black and white, reduction in numbers of prints produced. So despite these three options here, we've got a nice big list right here that we can pick from and we need two of them. So usually I would remember environmentally friendly inks and recycled paper, nice and easy. Here we are, on to question three, an online portfolio site where designers can upload their CV and examples of design work is shown below. So we've got a portfolio example. In order for a designer to build their portfolio online, they need to create digital copies of their manual work. Question A, state to input devices that could be used by designers to create digital files for their manual work. So moving on here. Creating digital files, we could use a scanner, we could use a camera, or we could use a graphics tablet. 
and that's worth two marks. So we're looking for two of these answers here. Do not accept only phone, smartphone, must make reference to the camera feature, and it would accept tablet. So graphics tablet or tablet, and you could say your phone, but make sure to say phone camera. And obviously scanner is just by itself, scanner. Question B now, explain three advantages to the designer of having their portfolio published online rather than being printed. You should not refer to environmental advantages in your answer. So we already talked about the environmental advantages. Now what we're wanting to talk about is how much better working um, online is rather than working manually. So loads of options for this as well. And we've got three marks, so we want three of these. Reach a wider audience, reduction in cost, this must be justified. Ease of editing, ease of sharing, sharing updates, ease of access everywhere or anywhere. Instant communication with wider audience, advantages of cloud online storage to back up. Things that we would not accept. Uh, do not accept responses that can relate to environment. Obviously, they said that in the question. And do not accept answers relating to reduced storage space. So none of these. And we've got lots of different options right here. We want to pick three of them. Three continued. A draft of the CV created using a desktop uh, publishing software as shown below. So we've got Maratela, product designer right here. Question C, explain two advantages of the designer of using desktop publishing software to produce the CV. So again, more advantages of using desktop publishing to create uh, so, um, documents. So again, lots of answers for these lists. So you can really remember a lot of them. Um, ease of integration of graphics and images can be easily manipulated to create eye-catching eye designs. Can create documents that have very uh, varied layouts, more than a word processing package. Uh, layered function that can be used to overlap elements. Ease of editing, variety of fonts, uh, guides, guide tools, speed of proportion, wide range of color schemes, access to a wide range of media, and layout would be more accurate. And of course, you can have any other relevant advantage that is related to the context as well. Moving on to D, describe two ways the designers use each of the following design elements and principles in the CV. So two marks for each of them. So we want to say two ways that they've used each of these design elements and principles. So, well, not onto the answers. Let's go up and take a look at it. Right here. So, first one, we have alignment. Left alignment of colored bars on the left hand column of the page. Left alignment of multiple body text components on the right hand of the page. Uh, icons aligned horizontally along the bottom. So, we can see all the alignment on the page, all of this aligned here. Now, candidates should provide two distinct examples. Any response must refer. Uh, so that's for all of these right here. They want two of these responses. So three examples right here. Moving on to I, I, Unity. So a couple different answers for Unity. Repeated use of color. So they've used the same color tone. Uh, repeated use of shape. So down at the bottom here all of these different shapes. Repeated use of line, repeated use of font style, use of alignment and unity created through proximity. That's them being all close together. Now, on to line. Line to be connected to bullets, connects heading to whole, column of text, divides pages and helps lead the eye. So we can see we have nice use of line down here and it helps connect and separate. Okay, moving on to question E. The designer used graphic icons to represent some information as the, uh, on the CV as shown below. Interest, 
traveling, music, golf, and cycling. Explain why the designer has used graphic icons. So, one mark for this one. And lots of different answers we could use. Simple to view and identify, speed of communication, no language barrier, and increased visual interest. And that's for these icons down the bottom here. Now, a 3D CAD illustration of a self-assembly ch uh, children's toy is shown below. 4A. Explain two reasons why this type of graphic would be uh, useful in the promotion of the toys. So, two mark answer for this. Any of the two. And we would not accept shows what it looks like without mention of material or colour. Now, any of these two. This type of graphic is easily understood by non-technical people. Provides realistic representation of the product. Perspective view provides realism. Shows material. Shows colour. Shows the product fully assembled. So it's basically presenting the model and showing it off. Showing the uh, buyer what they're buying, essentially. For continued, the toy is made up of a number of parts. Two samples of assembled in uh, instructions are shown below. An exploded isometric drawing and a 3D CAD illustration. So we can see here, position uh, the front panel in the front of the main body and uses two times M10 bolts to secure the part together. So we've got the front panel, main body, the M10 bolts, an exploded isometric drawing right here. Position the front panel in front of the main body and use the two M10 bolts to secure the parts together. So we've got the instructions on how this toy gets placed together. <coughs> For continued, uh, designers need to decide on their exploded isometric drawings or rendered illustrations to be used in the assembly instructions. Question B, explain one advantage and one disadvantage of each graphic um, ensure you do not use the same answers more than once. So we have a nice four mark question here. So one advantage of exploded isometric, one disadvantage, and again, the same for 3D CAD illustration, an advantage and one disadvantage. So large, large answer right here. Lots of different examples. Please note that there is no requirement to compare the two graphics. Candidates are being asked to comment on the graphics of their own merit. Do not accept instances where candidates have used the same advantage or disadvantage more than once. If a candidate is responded to an opposite uh, for the graphic, please accept. Uh, underline indicates typical responses that candidates may try to duplicate for each graphic type. So make sure you're not duplicating your answers. <clears throat> so for exploded isometric, we can see it's clear to see the outline of the parts. It's uncluttered by materials and colors, no requirement to print in color, and a couple other answers down here. A technical style of graphic that some audience may struggle to interpret. So this is us onto the disadvantages. Tangent edges are shown and may confuse audience. It's only a partial exploded view. So talking about being a bit more complicated to view, but if you do know how to view it, you an exploded isometric view is quite handy to look at. 3D CAD illustration. The advantages, it's realistic, clear to view, easily understood by a wide audience, so different from the exploded view. You can see material, colors, and products. Uh, it shows off parts, fits together. Disadvantages, it will be high uh, print cost due to the color print. Uh, shadows can be obscure, can obscure some visibility, and it's only got a partial exploded view, so it would be a bit more difficult to get a good sense for what it looks like. So all we need is one, one from here, one from here, one from here, and one from here, just as long as we don't copy our answers twice. And then that would be us getting a nice easy four marks right there. Four continued. An orthographic drawing of the Children's toy is shown below. The orthographic drawing contains errors that do not conform to British standards. So we're trying to look for the errors in these drawings. State six errors that are shown in the orthographic drawing. So six marks for six errors. So we'll look down here. 
we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine errors in this example, and we're only needing six of them. So, incorrect di uh, direction of text on dimension 300. So, what we can see here this is the Let's see, incorrect direction of text, yes. So it's moving the wrong direction right here. Missing diameter symbol on 222 two, two, or 220. Oh. Can't actually see where that is. Let's have a wee look on this. Ah, yes, because that is a diameter because it's a wheel technically. So we're missing a symbol on that. Plan or section XX wrong orientation. Ah, yep, so we've got the wrong orientation on these. View incorrectly labeled. Yep, incorrectly labeled because the plan should always be above the elevation. Center lines missing at detail X. Yep, no center lines on that. No projection symbol. So lots of different answers, and we only need six of them. Same with hatching missing from this handle here or from here. For continued, title block is to be added to the final orthographic drawing. The title block will include the symbol shown below. So I've got this symbol here. Describe the purpose of this symbol. So not what the name of it is, but what the purpose of the symbol is. So look here to show the way that the views are projected to show the projection of the type used or the orientation layout of the views so three options one mark for it so showing the way that the views are laid out if we imagine here we've got this small cone if we imagine this is the elevation we're looking at it from this side we would see this shape here so that's showing us what projection we are working in state three other pieces of information that should be included in the title block so this is us talking about our title block all of us should have uh, the third angle projection symbol in the title block but we should also have different things we only want three here but we've got loads of different uh things that we could add into our title block so scale of the drawing the date that we've made it your name or whatever product you're making um design page number drawn by yep that would be your name the tolerance of the drawing the unit of measurement so usually we would be working in millimeters uh, the materials that you used if you're working for a company your brand uh, and definitely the drawing type so right here we have an orthographic On to question five now. So, a new line of nail varnishes has been produced by a cosmetic manufacturer. The bottles are stacked for ease of uh, for so, uh, of storage and display. 3D CAD illustrations are shown below. So we have the applicator and we have the bottle body and we can stack them like this. Orthographic drawings and pictorial views of the bottle body are shown below. Right here, so we've got the orthographic views and we have a nice isometric view right here as well. But I've continued. Describe using the correct dimensions in 3D CAD modeling terms how would you how you would use 3D CAD software to model the bottle body. Uh, you may use sketches to support your answer. So nice big six mark question. And remember, anytime that it says you may use sketches to support your answer, I would be using your sketches when you can. It helps um, the marker when they're having a look through. So we're on a step by step on how we would create the bottle body. So this main bottle body right here. So what they're looking for is sketch the front profile uh, to dimension. So this front profile right here or this face. Extrude profile by 30 millimeters. So they're being precise. They want the exact thickness and the right 3D modeling term. Sketch a 20 millimeter circle. So we've got the diameter sign here as well on bottom of surface. So this is this small circle here. 
subtract circle 10 millimeters. So this is our extrude subtract. So subtract circle by 10 millimeters. That's it coming up by 10. Sketch 16 mil circle on top surface and extrude by eight. So this is this top circle here, 16 mil across and it's up by eight. Then shell one millimeter removing top circular surface. So it's important to include remove top circular surface. So remove this top surface here and then shell. So we have a one mil thickness. So one bullet point, two bullet point, three bullet point, four, five, six for six marks. Question B now. Orthographic drawings and pictorial views of the applicator. So this is the part, the the um, perfume, is it? Nail varnish? Ah, yes. Uh, this is where the applicator goes in. So here are our views right here. Question B, describe using the correct dimensions, the 3D CAD modeling term. So the exact same thing, but for this sketch right here. So how would you create that? And instead of six marks this time, it's only four marks. Now, um, this one, you have a couple different approaches. Um, you could revolve. And what they're looking for here is sketch half profile of top section, fully dimensioned, re revolve. Sketch central axis or identify central axis. Sketch rang, uh, rectangle six by two millimeters on bottom of surface component and extrude rectangle by 10. So the extrude approach, they would create half of the profile or excluding this part here, they would create half of the profile, uh, revolve it. Um, then they would create a sketch of this small part here and extrude it afterwards. So that's the revolve approach. Extrude approach with shell. One mark for each. Profile 20 millimeters and extrude 10 millimeters. So that's this top part here. Extrude it down. Shell two millimeters and remove face. Sketch profile 10 millimeters, extrude 33 millimeters. So that's to create these small parts in here. Um, yep, sketch rectangle six by two on left bottom surface. So that's just for this small part as well. Extrude approach. So we've got another extrude approach as well. Profile 20 millimeters and extrude 10 millimeters. Sketch 16 millimeters, subtract 8 millimeters. Sketch profile 10 millimeters, extrude 33, and then the small rectangle at the bottom again. And you could make that sketch in your daughter. And as you're writing each of those points, you could be labeling this sketch the entire time. <clears throat> Five continued here. The nail varnish is available in the wide range of colors, tints, and shades. Complete the table below by adding the missing information. So there's a nice, easy six marks here. It's color theory, color, red. Primary or secondary? So we've got primary color here. Is it advancing or receding? Red's a warm color, so it would be um, advancing. Green, we've got secondary, receding, or mood. Green, I could say nature, energetic, possibly. We'll take a wee look in a minute. Blue, is it a primary or secondary? I could say it's a primary. Um, receding color, formal. Orange is a secondary color. Is it advancing? It's a warm color, so it would be advancing. <clears throat> it could be mood for appetizing. Yellow, is it a primary or secondary? It's a primary, and it's advancing because it's warm. Mood, we could say that it's happy. So looking here, reds, we've got all of these answers in white. So yes, the red is uh, warm, so it would be advancing. Green, cool, restful, nature, calm, fresh, safe. Lots of different answers. We only need one. Blue, primary color. Orange is an advancing warm color. Yellow is primary. And warm, energetic, happy, sunny, lively, excited. Please award marks for any appropriate response for mood. So if it's appropriate, you would get the marks for it. To one mark questions here, D&E. Um, explain the difference between a tint and a shade. So what we have here, a tint, you add white, and a shade, you add black or grey. 
explain how tertiary colours are made. So we have primary, we have secondary, and we have tertiary. So um, tertiary colours, mixing a primary and secondary colour together. Two primaries equal secondary, and a primary and a secondary equal a tertiary. Continued, uh, if I continued, explain illustrated views of two bottles are shown below. There are three stages in assembly. State using 3D CAD terms how you would assemble and constrain the components shown above. Corresponding surfaces and or edges have been indicated for you. So three mark question here. We have I, 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 and uh, I, I, I. Um, right. So, for the first one here, the constrained used would be center axis because we're wanting to constrain by using the center axis of this hole and uh, this extrude. The next one we want would be extrude align because we're wanting to align these two surfaces, or sorry, constrain align. And the last one is mate because we would want to mate these two surfaces together so that they are joined. Question next six now. An outdoor play system has been produced. Various arrangements can be made use, uh, using four tunnel sections. Each section is color coded on the inside. A 3D CAD illustration and pictorial line drawings are shown below. So we've got a children's play area right here, lots of tunnels and they're all color coded, and we've got each of our four sections that we can make this up of. An, incom uh, an incomplete parts list of the 3D illustration is shown below. Complete the table below by adding the missing information used, the arrangement shown in the rendered 3D CAD illustration above. Six marks. So uh, we've got two of these, and we've got six more to fill in. So section one six so we need to work out what one has six of it so i'm going to have a look at this one section one. Oh, actually yep so section one has six so section one is just this straight tube right here two three oh not there four five six section two right here so this connector has three. One, two, three. So there's only three of those, and we can see that that color is blue. So color blue. Oh, color for section one as well it is green. Section three, the color would be magenta. Um, so that's that section there. We have one, two, just two of those. Section four, this curved section. One, two, three, four. And that would be red. So let's go have a wee check there. Section one, six, green. Color two, three, blue, two for section three. Section four would be four and red. Please accept green or similar for section one. Please accept red or similar. So those are two colors that. You might not notice uh, or you might not get correctly, but if you're close to them, then they'll still give you the mark. Six continued. So B, orthographic drawings and pictorial views uh, of one of the tunnel sections is shown below. So we've got um, section four right here, this curve. Describe using the correct dimensions in 3D CAD modeling terms, how you would use 3D CAD software to model section four so another 3d cad software mod um, modeling question but uh, this time it's only three marks so lots of different approaches right here we'll just go over one of them for now um revolve approach one or we'll go over both of the revolve approaches sketch circle 100 millimeters with smaller circle 90 inside of it Sketch vertical line offset 100 millimeters from center of hole and 90 degree quarter revolve profile. So remember, you don't need to revolve a full 360 degrees. You can revolve a quarter and that would get you that small 90 degree curve instead of the 360 degrees donut. 
Sketch circle 100 with vertical line off axis, 100 millimeters from center of circle, 90 degree quarter revolve profile, and then shell. So instead of creating two sketches and revolving it, you create one sketch of a circle, revolve it, and then shell. And then we also have another extrude approach and an extrude along a path approach. An orthographic assemble plan of one arrangement is shown below. Identify two correct pictorial assemble drawings that match the orthographic plan shown above by ticking one of the boxes below. So we've got this plan of this play area, area uh, all these tunnels, and one of these represents that. So that we've got a plan view and we've got six different isometric ones as well, and we need to pick the correct view. Oh, actually, I have a check here. Two mark question, two correct pictorial views. So, looking here, I'm going to start off with this feature here, this fork right here. So, looking here, you can see the fork right there coming up. I'm going to follow this right way. It should be straight. Right here, we've got a circle. So, uh, Instantly, I know that one's not the correct one. This one here. Find this shape. Come across. I come to the right. If I'm looking at it from this way, it should be straight. It is straight. Come straight up. It comes straight up. Go to the right. It's there. Go to the right. Yep, that's there. Across to the left. Across to the left. Yep. Straight down is that. Straight down is that. Up and around, up and around, and then that's there. So I know that the top right one is correct. Coming across here, up, across, there should be nothing, so I know it's not that one. Up, across, there should be nothing, it shouldn't, it's not that one. Up, across, should be nothing, it's not that one, and then up across and there's nothing there so this is the only one that's left so we can look right here top right and bottom left so bottom left and top right and that's the end of the question paper there so hopefully that was uh, informative and hopefully you now all know how to get full marks on the 2019 past paper